Um, has anyone else here played um, Resident Evil Village's new demo that was live yesterday? Nope, covering nope. my ears, boys. I no, um, I uh, I had to go to the bathroom, so I missed my windows. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the, can we That's just talk so about like that limited availability? So it's like oh, and the way that they explained it, PlayStation owners get it first, like a couple days early, and I'm just, I, remember, I remember just staring at the screen, and I'm like, how does this make any sense? Like, I, I don't, I don't think there's any real justification for it aside from they want like their peak viewership numbers, um, mm -hmm. like as high as possible. So this is, this is just all like a marketing well, thing. So I was talking to my my uh my uh, partner slash boyfriend and what he thinks is because when the resident oh. Evil 2 demo got released slash that, needed there i, I don't think so. i did may or may not be dating <laughs> you may or may, may not, not be dating. Uh, <laughs> your partner may or may not be your boyfriend um when the resident evil 2 demo you know how that demo was like 60 minutes well pc players were able to hack into that and take that timer off and i did pretty that much able to travel haha pretty much able to travel like the entire police station just unattended so he so he was under the impression that capcom saw that was like oh fuck because maybe the entire village is in that demo <laughs> and they went shit give people like 30 minutes <laughs> Give I was them like thirty, and we're good. They'll never be able to like hack hack into it. I was talking so, to um, I was talking to Corey about it a little bit earlier. He couldn't make it onto the show. He's going to birthday party of some sorts, I believe. Birthday, birthday. His birthday is coming up. It's going to be on not March, uh, May third, which is birthday. when is that? Next Monday. So happy early birthday to Corey. Um. Yeah, we were talking about it, and there's not really any story stuff in these demos. And what and what the the takeaway me and him both had is that these are taking areas from the game, but remixing like the item placements from what's going to be in the base game. Uh, like the area you go through in this castle demo, it's the exact reverse of the maiden demo, and like things are in completely different locations. There's different vibes. So in that regard, it's kind of like the the peak of what i would want a demo to be and that is giving you the experience of it but it's not literally just a vertical slice that's exactly the same mm -hmm. um as, as that you would be playing because i that's why i traditionally don't like demos like when i when i um when i play tested horizon i think like a year and a half before it came out i you literally may or played, may not have play tested horizon <laughs> I, that nda's up up and over um <laughs> But um, so I, I played like literally from the beginning up until you go to Meridian and that's like a good eight hour chunk. So when I when I first boot up the, the actual game, I was just like, oh, yeah, I, I have already done this. Granted, it, it runs better now, but and then pe yeah. people aren't people aren't purple T poses. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Which is a shame because that would be great. Yeah, yeah. One, one could argue that is the that is the superior experience that that is the authorial attempt. But uh, yeah, I, I like the way that they approached this demo. Um, Sarah, I, I know you like you were kind of opposed to starting it for your own reasons. Do you want to go into that? Yeah. So um, I I I watch all of the Resident Evil directs that that Capcom has been having, and my favorite part. Now I've been playing Resident Evil for pretty much half of my life like this the series it means so much to me it's how me and my may or may not be boyfriend can either confirm slash partner I met. Mm -hmm. um and oh, i've just had so many really boyfriend. Good yeah i i i love you um it's just like it's it's how me and a lot of my friends became friends was through Ver resident evil and i've always loved the idea of going through a resident evil game blind like not knowing anything and I've seen almost every village trailer. And a part of me is that at, at this point, I'm just like, you know what? I'm done. Like, I just want to wait till my collector's edition gets gets delivered. I want to put the game in. I just want to, like, enjoy village. And I played that maiden demo and I loved it. It was super cool, super duper spooky. I love those types of demos. Now, the types of demos that they just released where it's like, here, ju just explore the village, just explore the castle. To me, 
that's like in my head if if Resi before was released today and they put out a demo that's like here explore the village center and i'm like this is just gonna spoil that really awesome running for your life segment that we're just running in circles screaming just like ah there's like, like a chainsaw guys behind you like you mm-hmm. know it's like no like i i want to go into that blind i want to go in and like yeah i get that it's like vertical chunks but at the same time i want to step into that castle for the first time blind i want to see everything for like the first time i want to go into that village <clears throat> as <clears throat> as blind as possible i don't want to like be like okay here's the village being I, attacked by werewolves i, I feel like it, in a way that's actually that actually makes it more mysterious slash terrifying for me is that Yes, you do. You do. You do have this brief little experience with this remixed vertical slice. Like, uh, let, let's take um, Resident Evil 2's uh, hardcore mode for inst- not even hardcore. The uh, the second run, um, which is basically like it's the same thing, same environment, whatever. And the second run or in the first game, you don't find Mr. X until like, let's say like 40% through the game, you know where he spawns. You're like, okay, that's fine. Second run, when he just pops up around that fucking corner out of nowhere, you're like, oh no, that that's not supposed to happen. Why is he here? Like, that was one of my favorite moments of that entire game. And it's just because it takes your expectations and things are just in different places where they weren't... Um, before and yeah, it kind of like, just does, it kind of revolves around that aspect for the yeah, second like, run personally and i'm gonna give a really shitty opinion here seeing those gifts of like big tall vampire m- mommy like coming through the door and chasing mommy. you i wish i had never seen that i want to experience that without having seen anything and the fact that the internet of course did what the internet does <laughs> And I'm like, oh, great. I'm not going to experience this blind and not be like, ah, oh, fuck. Like I did when like Baker came around the corner and was like, come here, pretty, pretty boy. And it's like, ah, oh. like I'm not going to be able to experience big, tall vampire, like, like kneeling through the door to just be like, hello, Ethan. Instead, I'm seeing the gif every, everywhere. And I'm like, oh, great. There's that part spoiled for me because the internet can't keep being horny to itself for five minutes. Sarah, you are in no place to talk on that. Listen, leave me alone. (laughs) I wish I wasn't spoiled on the fact that Chris is in this and his shirt is so tight, his tits are just ready to explode out of it. I like, I wish, like, just it makes me so mad that, of course, the internet did what the internet does and just spread that gif everywhere. Because now I'm kind of mad that, because I didn't think that she was going to be like, baker i didn't think that she was gonna chase us i thought that we were just gonna have awesome like boss mm. fights where she slowly mutates into a giant monster which i still think is going to happen but now i know that she's pulling a jack baker on us and like following us through the through the castle and now i'm just like oh now where's the like now the whole like mood is killed because i know that this is going to happen when i think the best part of a resident evil game is not knowing that something's going going to happen like how in i think it was resident evil 2 or 3 that started doing this how sometimes when you would open doors and zombies would break through the door first and just scare the shit out of out of you like going through that blind was some of the coolest memories i've had as a as a kid because i didn't know that that could happen you see the door opening animations as like a moment to breathe instead you go to open the door and the zombies just come like crawling out of the dark and you're like ah fuck like i wasn't expecting that to happen but now with the power of the internet the power of horny now i know that she's gonna follow you throughout 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 the castle and i'm like i wish i would have seen this blind i wish i would have known this blind i think it comes down to two completely valid but separate uh schools of thought for for horror and just like I don't know, you can extrapolate it to writing, whatever. It's that, like, on, on one hand, like, the horror could be, like, things that you don't know are coming, and it's that kind of anticipation. But on the other end, knowing that something is coming up and knowing that it is still going to be terrifying, that you're going to have to eventually deal with it is, like, its own kind of horror in that regard. But um, See, I guess I'll that, go to... That, that kills horror for me. Knowing what's going to happen kills the horror. And just knowing that she's going to follow us and, like, Jack baker us throughout the part of of the castle i'm just like oh now i know that she's gonna pop up at some point and i'm gonna walk into the castle and just be ready for her to like pop out Mm -hmm. so it's just like i have mixed feelings on it i i will do a brief little tangent then i'll go but more into the demo uh the build-up in the last of us 2 specifically the theater i think that buildup is good. Yeah. That buildup is really fucking good. And then ha- <laughs> like ha- having that time bomb, that uh, what's the expression? Why am I blanking on it? 
um, H- Hancock's bomb under the table where you know this thing is going to happen and you're eventually going to have to revisit that. I think yeah. that's uh, yeah, that's just that's just perfect. And like in some like obviously there's a, there's a different um, level achieved between these two things. It's not exactly the same. But to go into the demo, and there's not really much story stuff to to tell. It's just mainly gameplay things. Um, I, the second one was substantially shorter than the uh, first one. So, so the first one I finished in like 28 minutes and I was still like kind of trying to go through it pretty fast. Um, finished the second one in 14 minutes. Uh, had a lot of combat. There was like maybe uh, I think like at least eight enemies or something like that. Uh, it gives you a lot of ammo, but you still have to get headshots. And maybe I just have potato aim when, when I'm playing <laughs> And uh, with a game that doesn't have like a bunch of aim assist, like Halo, I'm fine. Call of Duty, I'm fine. But like Resident Evil um, Mm -hmm. Village, I'm just struggling to get headshots. But one little cheap uh, tactic I learned, instead of just like aiming down and then moving the reticule to to aim at them and shoot them, if after each shot you just re-aim, it snap, there's a slight snap to their head. So that could be useful. Um... There's on the fly crafting from resources that don't even take up space in the attache case. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I'm down. I'm down for that. I'm I, down I, for that I had such a bad freaking like OCD with it in um in Resident Evil form. Just like I'm constantly rearranging stuff, playing Tetris with it. I'm like, ah. But um Don't worry, you'll 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 get to do that in VR soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um the the Duke character, the character that sells you weapons, items, upgrades, and whatnot. Um it's it's pretty extensive it's it's more than what even the merchant was doing in four um with the added bonus that he's also talking kind of explicitly about story details like he's someone nice. that you can actually converse with he's not just the merchant just with what are you buying i'll is buy it, it at a high it price like, is it you can ask him about stuff or does he like just drop stories from what i got from the demo like you go up to him and he has like a couple little lines i would imagine that they're different for each time you encounter him um okay. one one fun tidbit uh, that Corey got him to say that I didn't. Um he, he specifically asked, What are you buying, strange? Not in the voice, but he asked nice. you and then he <laughs> says, like, oh, don't mind me. I'm just quoting a fr- uh one of my old friends. Yes, give that shit to me. Give that Resident Evil extended universe to me. Let's go. <laughs> um when I was fighting the enemies, um you can't really brute force especially when there's a lot of them just like kind of circling around you like you have to use your environments to uh to funnel them funnel them in so if i wasn't killing enemies fast enough i would just like full ass just like pull a 180 run back um close some doors and um so it, it definitely reminds me of of strategies i would use in resident Evil 4 where you can't just fight like five dudes in front of you you gotta funnel them and take them off one by one especially since you have um me and Corey both bought the shotgun, but we kind of use that as a last resort uh, weapon. But but utilizing the range on your weapons and uh, funneling is is uh, imperative to not dying. Um, blocking seems even more powerful than um, than Resident Evil Seven. Like in Seven, you would mitigate some damage. You'd like maybe take half, um, just because you're not as agile as you are in the. Um, and the third person Resident Evil games, the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes. Um, so you, you kind of have to let dudes slash at you, but you block like, I want to say like maybe 90% of the damage you would take otherwise. It's uh, it's pretty damn useful. And I was playing on standards. I don't know if that's going to be buffed or nerfed in the uh, in the game once it re- releases proper. Um, Yeah, I think that's basically I have on it is... Anyone have any questions or just wait for the game to come out? I'm just going to wait for the game to come out because I was waiting for this game since they announced it last year. And if I don't get <laughs> werewolf oh. friends, I'm going to be very angry. I, I forgot, Sarah. I, I will not spill any details oh. whatsoever. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I told Corey and Blaine last week, I know the answer if werewolf Chris is in the game. Oh, no. I know the answer. My friend knows knows too, and he's like, I just don't want you to get your hopes up. And I'm like, no, you're supposed to be a good boyfriend and tell me that's okay, babe. Werewolf Chris is gonna happen and you are gonna be so excited. I'm like, you're supposed to do that. You're See, supposed to get my hopes I, up. I was being impartial. He's yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna say anything. I, I I'm allowed to dream. I'm allowed to dream. <laughs> 
Um, and yes, Blaine, I know me saying Chris should be a werewolf kind of makes me a furry. Leave me alone. Embrace it, sir. Ah! <laughs> Never. Um, Kyle, so Resident Evil's like totally not your thing whatsoever. Um, God, no. Is is there anything specific that like stands out just like, nah, just totally not interested in it? I am a complete coward. Man, I get scared so easily. I... <laughs> So I watched friends play Resident Evil 7. And Yeah, that was a bad one. I <laughs> Oh, okay. oh no, well then I'll, I'll let you slide on that for real quick basically. Like, uh... Man, no, no. I like um, five five minutes in was like I had to leave the room. I was like, all right, I'm uh, yeah. I'll see you guys. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. I'm not and I remember like I know even when the uh, when the PT, I know it's not Resident Evil, but when the when the PT demo was out uh, a, a bunch of the, my roommates and I, we downloaded it and we played it one night. We had some people over, we were playing through it, but we had some like leaky or creaky pipes in the apartment. Oh no. And, <laughs> and I swear to God, I didn't sleep for like two weeks because anytime I would like start to fall asleep and hear them, I would freak out because I would be like, what the hell <laughs> is that? Because I just I I don't I don't I don't no nope, I don't I don't enjoy I don't enjoy being frightened I don't like things jumping out at me is the biggest thing I like things that are just creepy is fine like I I watched um what was it Quiet Place mm-hmm. right and I and I liked that movie because it's not really it's not like a jump horror thing but anytime there's things that jump out at you or they're chasing you or things like that I'm like that just man that scares me and then my heart starts like going nuts I'm like man that is that is not fun no. for me do you, do you find is that it, sorry is it first person horror that that gets you or is third person something you can handle easier this is this is just curious so like if you were set Same in front question. of a horror if you were set because i because of my fight fight or flight like brain always being const, constantly on i can't turn it off the first person gets me a lot harder because i can't see around me I can't see to like either side of my character because you're just looking at what's in front of you. So that fucks me up because I'm always like tense and ready to scream. So beating Resident Evil 7 was actually like a badge of honor for me because I didn't quit it half and halfway through because the anxiety that I got while playing third person horror games. It depends. Something like Dead Space scares the fuck out of me because they're popping out of everywhere. While Resident Evil 4, they at least make noises before you see them. You're gonna hear Austin oh, Astero, whoever the fuck it goes around you before. That's probably really terrible. Like you are gonna well, hear that continue. first, huh? Nothing. Sorry. Please continue. Uh, I, no, I got like, you, Mesa. I got you. Wait, what? No, no. Say it. Oh, this is one of the things. This is a more yes, Vidil. Yes. <laughs> like, well, like the point is, you hear it first. Obviously, Resident Evil 4, you hear them. Like, you hear them most mm-hmm. of the time before you see them. So it's like, you at least know that something's coming coming at you. So can you handle third person, Kyle? And it's just not first person that you can do because it, it's the fact you can't see around you? So I, I, can, I can definitely do third person better. So like, but it's still not, it's not, so like Control, for example. I've not been able to finish control because I'm on the D- the the second DLC, I believe, and you're oh, dealing with the, the weird tall tall monster. And I the fuck out of me. And so I've just I've just not been able to to get myself to go back and finish it because it was just so like my heart rate was spiking playing through it, and I'm just like I need to. If I, I to may play. help, go into the accessibility menu, turn invincibility on. That. That well, DLC becomes so incredibly easy so, and not so, scary anymore. <laughs> so, well, so I, I did that because um, someone had recommended that to me. So I did that. But for me, it's just the like, the creature. Holy itself? shit. It just it just popped up right in front of me. It's, yeah, it's, not like, that it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. So that's for me. It's really just so I don't I don't I just don't like things popping out at me or the or the like potential of something popping out at me. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, when I played The Last of Us 2, there's there's a scene where you're in the water 
And that one, I was like holding my breath the entire time because I, I have a fear of sharks because I had something happen in, in my childhood that I, I don't love sharks. And I'm sitting there the whole time like this is a moment where I feel like a shark is totally going to come out because that seems just- so I'm sitting here like just the thought of something potentially popping out at me already has me on edge. And then if it were to pop out at me, just freaks me out. Creepy things though, like doesn't bot if it's just like you see the thing very clearly and it's just creepy, that's totally fine. Like that's not the stuff that it's just things popping out at me. And it, it's not even so much that it like it's I don't know. It's 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 really just that it like my heart rate just spikes up like crazy and it takes me forever no. to settle I think that down I, and I, I don't love that. I think it's perfectly rational to even have that. I would hope that no one's ever tried to shame you for that. No, and it's like another thing is because I've talked to my therapist from a minutia of mental health problems, but I love horror. Like I love true crime. I love horror. I I love horror horror games, like that kind of thing. She's explained it to me as people with people with anxiety. We can handle how much we can intake and how much we can't take. So when it comes to something like horror, we can push ourselves to that line of enjoying something scary, but we always have that chance to stop it. We always have that chance to pause it or to turn it off or to be like, all right, I can't handle this tonight. Like, this is enough that I can that I can do. So and this is to like people listening. If anyone's ever interested in like horror, but they can't handle horror itself, I always recommend starting with something actually like Control. Control's a great, especially with its second DLC, because the because the tall creature, Control's a great chance to test how well you can handle horror in something that's not horror related because like that that's how i've always explained it to friends is if you want to get into horror because there's such a really great horror medium especially gaming out out there playing games that have horror elements in them that aren't exactly horror themed gonna go back to like a bunch of episodes ago and i discussed that one mission in watchdogs legion games that Mm -hmm. aren't supposed to have horror in them that have horror elements in them is a great way to see what your point of no of no return is because then you could be like okay this is what fucks me up this is what doesn't fuck me up so it's so like we so especially for you control was a great thing for you because you're and resident Evil 7 and pt because you're like oh i don't like things jumping out at me the monster design creepy totally fine when it's jumping out that's when i can't handle stuff so it's like honestly, with that you know what you can and can't handle. So finding horror games that just re- rely on like creepy elements and not like jumps jump scares or anything, that's a great starting point for for you if you ever want to dive head head first into horror. Starting with the creepy stuff and then working your way up to okay, maybe I can handle jump scares. I'm gonna give Alien I- Isolation a try, or maybe I'm gonna try Re- Resident Evil Seven finally. I mean, I would even push back further that if if you have issues with horror movies, that games are infinitely worse in that regard, and that you're you're directly having to confront those by yourself. So we'll see. I, you we'll see with games, you have a pause button just like with films. So if you know that you can't handle something, blah, 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 like bash bash that pause, and 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 that's it. You're like, that's it. That's how much I can mm-hmm. handle. That's it. It's all Absolutely. mental things. <laughs> Mesa, th- thoughts on Resident Evil Village demo? Um, again, um, unfortunately, I miss it. I've missed both of them so far. Haven't really watched them. Uh, I'll eventually, I'll most likely eventually play it. Um, as with most uh, things, yeah. I just it's just not really a priority for me right now. Um, but um, I'm 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 quite positive it's going to be a very good game, and I'm very happy to see people love it. I think that's going to be fun to watch people people react to it. Nice. 